Fatima's Sorrow Episode 2 Good evening, sir, Jubril greeted respectfully, shaking Malambada's hand. Good evening, my son, Malambada replied warmly. Mrs. Danjuma then introduced Jubril's paternal uncles, Mr. Musa and Mr. Audu. Jubril's parents had separated years ago, leaving him under his mother's sole custody, hence his father's absence from the occasion. Welcome, my in-laws, Malambada greeted them, shaking their hands. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Malambada, father of the intended bride. After the introductions, Malambada excused himself to call out Fatima and her mother. In the bedroom, Fatima heard her father's approach and felt a surge of fear. The moment she had been dreading was finally upon her. Her father's voice reached them from outside the door. Fatima, Fatima, please come out now. They are eager to meet you. We'll be out very soon, her mother replied, turning to Fatima. Let's go, honey. But mom, I'm scared, Fatima confessed. Please don't be my child, the visitors won't bite, her mother reassured her, planting a kiss on her cheek. Besides, I'm sure you'll like him. Okay, if you say so, mother, Fatima sighed, allowing herself to be led out into the living room. Fatima entered the room, her legs trembling, supported only by Hajia Bintu's hand around her shoulders. Her mother guided her to a seat, and as Fatima glanced around, she saw her father, two unfamiliar men, and a lovely middle-aged woman smiling at her. Fatima presumed that the boy seated next to the woman was her intended groom. She swallowed hard, lifting her head slightly to observe him. To her astonishment, she recognized him immediately as Jubril, her senior at school. Perhaps it was the intensity of Fatima's gaze, or the strain in his neck from bowing for so long, but Jubril raised his head locking eyes with her. He was equally stunned, realizing that his intended bride was none other than his junior at school. For a moment, they stared at each other in disbelief. Jubril marveled at Fatima's beauty, which he had never truly noticed before. Jubril, this is Fatima. Malambada began pointing at Fatima. He is your betrothed. Assalamu alaikum, Fatima mumbled shyly, bowing her head once more. Father, I know him. We attend the same school though we've never spoken. Her father smiled warmly. Masha Allah, that's splendid. Don't worry, you'll get to know him better, he assured her. You know what? Jubril's family and I have a few things to discuss, so you both should go to the balcony and talk. Jubril and Fatima complied, excusing themselves to the balcony. As they stood together, Fatima couldn't help but notice Jubril's tall stature and handsome features. He didn't seem arrogant at all. Hey, Jubril greeted her. Hi, Fatima replied softly, her eyes cast downward. I'm in disbelief that we're about to get married. Honestly, I was taken aback when I found out you were my intended. Jubril paused, clearing his throat. But I must admit, after seeing you, my interest may have grown. Fatima too had feelings for him, but she couldn't bring herself to confess. She was determined to halt the marriage. We barely know each other, so please tell my parents you don't fancy me, she implored, her desperation evident. I'm truly frightened. Why the fear? Jubril asked, concern coloring his voice. I'm inexperienced and afraid of the responsibilities of marriage, plus I'm not ready for pregnancy. Fatima's voice quivered, tears welling up. I dream of becoming a doctor. Can I pursue that dream if we marry now? Jubril remained silent, prompting Fatima to continue. I'm aware you're the most popular guy in school with a girlfriend. It'd be easy for you to reject me to my parents. She hoped he'd understand and decline. Jubril smirked, folding his arms. Is that all? What? Did you not hear anything I said? She sniffled. I heard it all, but those reasons aren't enough for me not to like you. Fatima grew more desperate. Fine, here's a strong reason. I have sickle cell anemia. You could tell them you'll tire of my illness. Jubril chuckled, surprised by her change in demeanor. I didn't expect this from you. You're usually reserved, he remarked before addressing her concerns. First, I promise to wait until we both graduate before any intimacy. Second, I'll ensure you complete your education up to any level you desire. He paused, voice softening. And about your illness, I'll care for you. I may not know how now, but I'll learn, God willing. Please stop crying and let's make the best of this situation. Our parents expect us to honor tradition. Fatima realized she couldn't argue. He had addressed each concern. I never mentioned my age. I'm 15. How old are you? She asked, wiping her tears. 
I'm 16, he replied. Their conversation continued and Fatima found herself drawn to him. When her mother called them for dinner, she felt disappointed. An hour later, Jubril and his family bid the Badas goodbye, expressing gratitude for the lovely meal. See you at school tomorrow, Jubril whispered to Fatima before leaving. Take care on your way back, she replied. Fatima's parents were pleased with how everything unfolded. Malam Bada smiled proudly at his daughter. You've made us proud. Thank you for not letting us down. Haji Abintu hugged Fatima. See, I told you'd like him. Fatima admitted the arrangement wasn't as bad as she thought. I should head to bed. I want to leave early for school. Good night. The next day, Fatima encountered Memuna on their way to school. Are you okay, Fatima? You seem upset. Memuna inquired with concern, noticing Fatima's somber expression. Fatima acknowledged the concern. Something serious is troubling me, she confessed sincerely. Memuna, sensing Fatima's hesitation to speak, encouraged her to share. You should talk to me. They say a problem shared is a problem halved. Struggling to find the words, Fatima devised a plan. Because I can't find the words, I'll write it down in a notebook when we get to class, she suggested. Memuna agreed, and they walked in silence to school. Once in class, Memuna handed Fatima her physics notebook as promised. Memuna was shocked as she read Fatima's written confession. She couldn't believe her friend was facing marriage at such a young age, especially to the school's most popular guy. Despite her surprise, she responded with reassurance in her note. Fatima found comfort in Memuna's response, relieved to have someone on her side. During break, Jane borrowed Memuna's notebook, unknowingly stumbling upon Fatima's conversation. Surprised and scheming, Jane saw an opportunity to gain favor with Habiba, the school's popular senior and girlfriend of Jubril. Jane swiftly showed the note to Habiba, hoping to impress her. Habiba, furious at Fatima's confession, plotted revenge. At the crowded school canteen, Fatima and Memuna struggled to find a seat. Fatima, realizing she left her purse, hurried back to the classroom, leaving Memuna behind. In the classroom, Fatima encountered Habiba and her clique, who attacked her mercilessly. They dragged her to a secluded building, leaving her battered and bloodied. Concerned for Fatima's absence, Memuna searched for her friend in vain. When Memuna informed Jubril, Fatima's betrothed, he joined the search. The story continues. Watch out for episode 3. Thank you for watching, and we hope you have learned something from our stories. Please write in the comment box, and also, please subscribe to our channel for more captivating and educative folktale stories. See you in the next story.